Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. So today I'll show you how you can do your own DIY tunnel bag. So these can be done in different sizes and different styles. This is the one I have for today. And I'll show you a French stitch this time so that we can keep it neat and easy. So you'll see how you can do that. And yeah, then we have the rope to close it with. And I decorated the endings as well. This is optional, but I'll show you how you can do that. And if you want to skip it, feel free to do so. The fabric is a bit sturdier. So let's get started. So you won't need much. You'll need your scissors, some pins and a safety pin, something to measure with, about 20 centimeters of rope and a little bit of fabric of your choice. I'll explain the plan as well, it's really simple. So the rope is 20 centimeters long, um, sorry, 50 centimeters long, and the fabric is 20 times 50 centimeters in its size. So you can use leftover pieces of fabric in different sizes, you can also use smaller bits and just do it patchwork style until you get your desired size. You can also make it bigger, smaller, or whatever size you want. I'll show you a French stitch so that you don't have to do the inside and outside separately. So we're keeping this really simple. It's going to be really easy and neat in the end, of course. And also, um, I added 2.5 to 3 centimeters or 1 inch. So make sure you think about the stitches and the fabric that are going to take away from your size. So I have 20 times 50 centimeters and the rope is 50. Let's start with the French stitch right away. So for that, we will first do a stitch along the side here and on the other side, all the way to the top. And you want the ugly side looking inwards, so one on top of the other. So the back side of the fabric faces the other back side and just do a stitch along both sides all the way to the top. I'll be using my regular needle on my machine, nothing weird or different this time, and I will be doing a regular A or a regular straight stitch with a width of 2.5. And you see here that we have some fraying going on. So in my case, this fabric is pretty bad with the fraying and sadly, it'll keep doing that as well. So by doing a French stitch, we can actually prevent that by hiding the first stitch that we did. And for that, we will cut as much leftover fabric as possible, as close to the stitch without damaging it. So I turned this inside out and now we will take the insides and align nicely from one end to the other. Then we can pin this. I already did it on the side so that you can see. And then we sew about 1 to 1.5 centimeters or about a half an inch away from the edge. Just a straight stitch and here is our inside edge so that we can prevent fraying or anything of that sort. And now we can turn this inside out. This was it. So that's the French stitch. It yields a super nice result and also prevents fraying. So here is what we have now on the outside. And now we will do the top with the rope. So 
So take the edge and fold about one centimeter or a half an inch like this to the inside. And you can just push it with your finger or you can iron over it as well and do that all around. If you have an iron, it'll be a lot faster and easier. So I need about one centimeter width for my rope. So I'll do a bit more room for it. So I'll double two centimeters, which is just a bit under an inch. And again, iron it or press it in with your fingers. And before you do this stitch, you need to do a hole that you can push the rope through and out. I'll do it in the front, but you can also decide if you want to do one or two holes with rings or without rings. And I'll do it with just buttonholes. So with my sewing machine, and for that I need a mark. So I'll take my fabric chalk and I'll find the middle on here where I would like my holes to be. And now mark. So you can probably barely see it, but I can still tell where it is. And now we need to unfold this so that we don't have um, any other unwanted layers underneath here. And then we can sew here. Okay, so pretty much every sewing machine has the button stitch option. So these guys here. Number one is the first step that goes to the first side. Then we have two for the bottom. The third step does the other side, the right side. And the fourth is the same as the second, but on top. And yeah, this is all you need to do this. So let's get started with step one. You can also practice on some leftovers if you've never done this before. Stitch width is between 1 and 0. And when you have your length for the hole, you can take the needle out of the fabric and move to the second step or your second stitch. And then do that. A couple of times there and back. I do about five and then we can move on to step three. When you get to the top, then you move back to the second or actually the fourth step and you finish your button stitch. And 
and I'll do step one once again to secure the whole thing. And that's what we have. I did two total and now I'll cut the middle out. Make sure you don't damage the stitches. Now align the fold as it was. Check if it looks good. So it should be on top but fully visible like this. And now we can pin this and close the fold with a stitch. So just go from the inside as close to the bottom edge as possible here. And also take care that your first fold stays this way. It's there to keep everything nice and neat and prevent fraying. So you can just stitch all around. Don't forget to return to a regular straight stitch and your stitch width should again be 2.5. Now you have to push the rope inside, so I'm using a safety pin. You just take it through one end, but not all the way so that you don't pull the whole thing apart, but a bit underneath and then just push the safety pin through. Okay, now I'll continue all the way to the other side. Okay, that took a while, but it did work. So these ends here did fray a bit more than I wanted them to. So I'll do a bit of fabric over them just to keep them neat and this way forever so that it stays this way and doesn't slip into the hole and gets lost. If you like it this way and if your ends are long enough that you can do a knot on top of each or do a knot on both at once, you can do that as well. Okay, so I have two pieces of fabric, in my case 4 times 8 centimeters, and I will fold these the following way. So the smaller sides to the inside, then in half to the outside like this and then we stitch it together on the sides but don't forget the little folds we did first so again fold inwards Turn everything and fold in half the other way. And now connect the two sides. Now you can turn this inside out and fix the corners too.
Then push the rope to the inside, fold the leftover bit in half. This is a bit too thick for the sewing machine, so I'll do it by hand, the bottom, the side and the top. And make sure that you catch the rope too, so that it doesn't slip out. And now we are done. So as you can see, this was a super fast project and it's great because it's customizable. You can do your own size, your own style, whatever you prefer for yourself. I showed you the French stitch as well. It's a stitch to keep everything nice and neat on the outside as well as the inside. So it prevents fraying as well, should you need that. And I think the ends look really cool as well, so let me know what you think about those as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to shoot a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll always stay updated with every new video that we post and you'll also have access to the videos we already posted. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Feel free to let me know what you think about it in the comment section below the video. And I'll see you in our next project. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye!